Welcome back to Fest Issues. We continue our conversation on sustainable renewable energy. Let us track back a little. Um, you just said that um, the uptake here is quite slow, but looking at the trends um, as far as how many clients you've had over a period of time and how frequently they come, how long do you think though um, Botswana would take or Botswana would take to catch up to the rest of the world in embracing renewable energy? Okay, so when we started our company just over four years ago, um, Botswana was producing less than 1% of its electricity from renewables. Today it's moving shiftly. It has a, it has a, a demonstrable commitment to shift by 15%. The government's been very good at publishing its ambition. You know, it's produced an integrated resource plan, which quite clearly states the projects they're going to build, and they have started building those. I mean, Botswana has a bit of reputation for not implementing, but actually they are building these projects. They're happening. They've let the contracts um, in the public sector through, through utility. So we are beginning to catch up. And as the cost comes down to where the levels that it's at now, it makes so much economic sense you know, to invest in solar. You don't have to wait five years to build a coal plant. You can build a solar plant in a year or eight months, nine months. So it's a rapid deployment of energy anywhere in the country. You can build it up in the Kalahari, up in Okavango. You can build it down in Tabong. You can build these plants everywhere you need the power. You don't have to transmit the power by power lines, which are very, very expensive infrastructure. Um, and the, the region as a whole, as you probably appreciate in Southern Africa, we have a deficit of 4,900 gigawatts of power. There's a massive shortage of energy. And everything we do in our society, whether it's health, education, production, manufacturing, all depends on electricity and access to electricity. You don't have those services without it. So it's essential that we move quickly. And I think the government recognizes that now. Even though the uptake of solar energy has been slow in the country, there are some corporates, businesses and individuals who pay testament to the positives that have come out of this undertaking. We are with representatives from Regent Hill Private School and the Fields Properties. Well, first of all, we, we have a reduction in our costs of electricity, of just regenerating our electricity. And because of a, a, a program by BPC, which is a rooftop solar program that we then enrolled and SEB helped us enroll into that program, which basically allows you to produce energy for your own needs and whatever excess energy that you don't require, you can actually export it into the grid. And therefore, it gives you credits. So you are, you know, you, you produce and you consume, you know, at the same time. So it actually allows you uh, to be able to uh, impact on your, on your bottom line quite significantly. And that is very important for any business. And also, that will also help with, obviously, you have to, in terms of transferring some of the costs uh, of, of running the place to your tenants, it also provides some relief of some sort uh, for your tenancy and therefore make this place attractive um, and also this being an office building it obviously operates mainly Monday to Friday and partly on Saturday weekends Sundays when this place is not consuming a lot of electricity we are able to export and earn those uh, you know valued uh, credits that reduce further reduces our bill and even on holidays and Christmas when businesses are not operating so that's a huge value add I've talked about the ESGs, obviously it helps our, our customers, which is our number one priority in terms of retaining uh, tenants. We consume a lot of the electricity that we produce, which works well for us, because our school is a day school, and that is when the sun shines. It works very well in our favor, because as we produce electricity, our students and our staff are consuming the electricity, and that creates less of a need for storage for after hours. So we, produ we consume 80, 90% of the electricity that we're producing. Um, and the other 10 or 20%, particularly on weekends when the school is less busy, we are able to export this electricity back into the grid. We are a grid-tied institution, 
which means that we have an agreement with the Botswana Power Corporation that excess electricity being produced can be sold back into the grid and the corporation can use it to power homes and businesses close to us. This gives us roughly a 10-year period over which we can recuperate the costs, after which it will be a tree that keeps giving fruit with very limited to no cost. And we will be able to enjoy the benefits of locally produced renewable energy at hardly any additional cost. When we started uh, this journey of, of transitioning, uh, it was immediately after COVID. So even the tenancy here was, was not at 100%. And therefore, the beauty about um, solar PV system is that it's scalable. So at the time, we sized it for the needs because, remember, our primary objective is to reduce our cost, yeah. not to export energy. We export excess energy. So we sized it accordingly to meet our requirements. But knowing that as we get more tenants, the building gets filled up, we can increase the size without changing too much. That's how beautiful renewable energy sources are because the source is there all the time. All you have to do is plan for you to be able to move as your needs increases. And, and therefore, we're looking at uh, uh, probably adding about a third of what we've already installed because there's still capacity in our roof to, to take some more uh, energy without really changing much in terms of our capital uh, investment.